Hey folks, it's Nate. It's time I got back to the drawing board. And tonight, well, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh we're gonna talk a little bit about principles. This is not something I really uh planned to do, at least not not on Friday of last week. Um, but based on uh some of the drama, for lack of a better term, that's been going on on Twitter for the past several days. I just wanted to, um, I guess, kind of explain what, what I'm aiming to do, I guess. That's not, that's not really the best way to say it. Um, I watched the uh, arguments between um, Ethan Van Skyver and Mike S. Miller, and I was, I don't know, I thought, the whole thing was a little overwrought, uh, but what really stood out to me is that um, creators are looking to do different things as they step out into the indie scene, and they are looking for different principles to be upheld, and those principles aren't necessarily uh, mutually exclusive, but sometimes they do work at, at cross purposes, and um, I think that's kind of what we saw when uh, Mike and Ethan went at it. And um, I don't really intend to um, break down that whole fiasco blow by blow, um, other than to say it was good that they, they hashed it out and they largely seem to be on um, amicable terms again. I don't know, I didn't, I didn't, I know they sat down and had a live stream and um, they're not sniping at each other. I haven't had a chance to actually watch the stream yet. Uh, I'm pretty busy. And honestly, like there's a lot out there to keep up with. Um, but I decided that uh, when you boil it down, the best thing to do is to hold people to their own standards and uh, not try and slap your own onto them. I think that's probably the, the um, biggest hurdle uh, that these two ran into. So um, since I do want to be held to my own standards, I guess I, I need to talk about what they are, what I, I'm aiming to do, what standards I expect to be held to, um, what I hope to give my audience and what I expect them to call me out on if they're not getting. And uh, so that's, that's what I'm going to do here. And if that's not interesting to you, I won't blame you at all if you duck out now. Um, but if you are hoping to stick with me for a long time, and I hope you are, um, well then this is what I'm trying to offer you. And this is what I expect you to kick me in the pants over if I, if I don't provide it. Um, the first thing is good customer service. So um, this is, you know, this was a, a big point of um, Comicscape at the beginning uh, was a big point, big part of the blow up this weekend, um, providing good customer service. And, you know, what exactly good customer service is, is kind of hard to define. Um, there's a lot of nuance to it. You can go to whole training seminars over it. I've been to those seminars. Um, and there's, there's a lot to juggle there. So I'm not going to try and lay out an hour long, you know, 20 point description of what I think good customer service is. Um, I'm, I'm going to try and have clear avenues of communication with my audience. I'm going to try and keep you appraised of what's going on. I'm going to try and quickly answer any questions you might have. Um, but um, what I'm not going to do uh, what I never plan to do is I never plan to um, deliberately provoke my audience or troll my audience in any way, shape, or form uh, through um, the Twitter or the Facebook or the YouTube page or any other method of communication I build with which to talk to my audience. Uh, now, I know that uh, trolling and kayfabe and, you know, there's a whole lot of persona involved in talking to people on the internet. I don't really have a problem with that. Uh, I know that trolling is a big part of Mike Miller's persona. Again, I don't have a problem with that. I don't expect him to be held to my standards. 
Um, I just don't want to do it because it seems like a really good way to open up a, a rift between you and your audience pointlessly. Um, and that's, I don't, I don't think that's healthy. I don't think that's good customer service. Um, if I'm going to do performance art, you're going to know it's performance art. Some of that performance art may be abrasive. And I'm certainly not going to censor the stories I tell because I think people might find aspects of those stories offensive. Um, if there's a woman who's a bitter old whore who never got what she wanted out of life. Well, I'm going to call her a bitter old whore who never got what she wanted out of life. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But when I am an artist talking to my audience, um, I want to be clear about what my audience can expect, even if I'm not specific. You know, I'm not always going to spell out my plans for the future blow by blow. Um, I may not know my plans for the future blow by blow, but I, I am never going to make deliberately offensive or provoking statements for the sake of being offensive or provoking. Um, now, that doesn't mean I'm going to dodge around uh, opinions I hold that might be offensive to people if I'm asked about them um, or if they are deliberate, you know, directly tied to what I'm doing in a story. Uh, but by and large, um, I'm not ever going to set out to troll people uh, or to um, provoke people. And that's just part of, part of the standards I'm laying out between you and me right now. Another thing is I'm, I'm going to try and foster good peer-to-peer -peer communications. Um, I, I don't think private grievances deserve to be aired in public, except as a last resort. Uh, if I have a problem with someone I work with, I'm going to do my best to solve it directly with them. Uh, I'm not going to call them out. Call out culture is toxic. It is a poison. It is literally the worst thing to happen to our society in decades. I'm just not going to do it. If I'm feuding with someone, I am going to do my best to keep it behind the scenes, even if no one else does. I'm not going to talk about it. Um, I'm not going to, you know, if that means I don't talk about the other person involved at all, so be it. Um, but it's going to be a private matter unless, um, you know, we have to bring it into the public because of a lawsuit or something like that. Hopefully I never have to do a lawsuit, fingers crossed. Um, or because the other party says, well, let's try and hash this out in a public forum. Um, that's not going to be my first choice, but if it's the only way to get it hashed out, then I'll do that. Um, I'm also never going to insult my peers. I'm not going to call them anti-Christian. I'm not going to call them homophobic. I'm not going to call them racist. Not going to do it. It's dumb. It's inflammatory. It gets you nowhere. It only serves to make problems harder to solve rather than easier. Um, I'm not going to do it in public. I will be very hesitant to do it, even in private communications. I've never seen that kind of shaming language produce good results. Never. There may be one or two corner cases. I ain't going to gamble on them, okay? If I say something like that, that's me burning a bridge. Um, if you hear me say something like that, then you need to ask me, Nate, are you, are you done? Do you just not want to talk to this person ever again? Uh, because honestly, um, that's, that's what that language is for. So there's, there's not going to be any of this throwing of slurs um, on this channel. Hopefully in no forums will I ever have to do that. And I'm not going to purity test anyone by the same token. I'm not holding other people to my standards. And I'm going to ignore attempts to hold me to other people's standards. I don't know what people were looking for when they took out the Comicsgate hashtag. I don't know if it was about reforming mainstream comics. I don't know if it was about good customer service. I don't know if it was about throwing politics out of stories entirely. I don't know. I don't care. Honestly, um, if I'm going to be purity tested, uh, that just proves to me that the person trying to purity test me does not have an opinion worth listening to. Um, so I, I'm not going to purity, purity test. 
I'm not going to take being, being purity tested by anyone else. Uh, if you hear me doing either one of those things, call me out on it. That's not something that should really be a part of artistic production, especially not independent, non-corporate artistic production. Um, even if there are people who have, have, you know, said things I really disagree with, um, I am, you know, if Vox Day rocks up to me and he says, you know, I want you to illustrate a book or, or um, I want you to promote your book on my show, uh, I'll promote my book on Vox Day's show. I will read Vox Day's book and I'll see if there's anything in it um, that I would be uncomfortable being associated with. And I'll give him an answer. If there isn't, I, I'd be happy to do it. Well, I wouldn't really. I don't like actually illustrating other people's stories. But, you know, hypothetically. Um, I know Vox Day is is kind of a, a uncomfortable person. I really think he's a bit of a crank, um, but I'm not going to purity test him as long as you know he's showing good behavior um, and he wants to engage with what I'm doing. That, that's fine. Again, I don't think that's ever going to happen because uh, I think he's he's he he doesn't. He doesn't show as much care in his work um, or in the way he presents himself as he should. I'm not afraid to say that, uh, but he will, you know, if he ever hears this, um, he'll, he'll probably just say, oh, well, that proves that this person is stupid and I shouldn't work with him. And you know what? More power to you, Vox, if that's the way you feel. Um, anyways, uh, moving on. So uh, no insults. No slurs, no purity testing, um, private communication, if, if there are differences in opinion. That's how I want to work with other indie comics creators. And, um, you know, that doesn't mean I will automatically work with everyone. I have to see something good, you know, coming out of that relationship. Um, but I'm not going to I'm not going to hold other people to 100% adherence to my values. And third, I want to provide you guys with, with good stories. Now, I don't believe that um, that means we have to throw politics out of stories entirely. Uh, I do believe the amount of politics needs to be toned way down. Uh, there's just too much. It's done too poorly. Um, it's too in your face. Uh, and, you know, it's like even a good political story you know, a, a good, um, strong story of any type can wear out its welcome. Uh, you don't want to eat cheesecake all day, every day, and nothing else. Uh, you want a lot of different kinds of food. You want a good steak. Um, you want some fresh fruit. You want all kinds of different stuff. Uh, I'm not ruling any kind of story out, including a political, uh, politically based story. Um, I, I only want it to be good. I want it to have uh, good storytelling elements. I want it to have good characters. Um, I want it to be fun and fast moving and relatable with good characters. Um, you know, good protagonists, good antagonists, good plot twists, the whole nine yards. I want good story. I don't care if it's political or not. I've enjoyed plenty of stories that were political and written from a political viewpoint that frankly I strongly disagree with. That doesn't necessarily make the story bad. Um, so I'm not ruling any kind of story out. But it has to be a good story. Um, and I promise you that I'll provide you with a wide variety of stories. Uh, and if you find that my stories are, are too similar to one note or just not well told enough, well, call me out on that. Um, but if you, you're upset because you know, it's not, um, they're not always the same genre or uh, they're tackling a subject matter you're uncomfortable with or um, you're, you, you don't like uh, a, a particular subject, uh, 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 you know, a political story or a genre or anything like that. Um, I'm sorry. I really hope you'll give it a chance anyway. 
it's my hope that my stories will be compelling enough that you'll stick with them, uh, even though the subject matter, the genre might not be to your liking or the characters may come off wrong to you. Um, I, I ask for your patience in those cases. Um, but I am, I am not going to uh, rule out where my creative impulses take me. Um, I hope to, to present those stories in a way that's, that's great for everyone. Um, but I recognize that not every audience, the, the audience is not going to go with me everywhere I want them to go every time. Um, that's just part of being a storyteller. Um, but I want the stories to be good. So um, if you can show me why, by the rules of storytelling, the story's rubbish, by all means, do that. That I welcome. That is important for me to grow. Uh, so those are, the, those are the three big principles. Good storytelling, good peer-to-peer -peer communication, good audience communication, good customer service. And um, that's, that's what I'm presenting to you. That's what I want you to hold me to. That's what I hope to provide to you. And that's all I have to say for tonight. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you um, will point out to me anything uh, that you think I might have missed that should be principles I hold myself to uh, and that you will hold me to uh, down in the comments below. And uh, feel free to check me out on Twitter at Back to the Drawing Board and let me know if I ever don't provide you with the things I should be. Anyways, there's a like button and subscribe button down below. Use them as you see fit. And I'll talk to you later.